Greetings, so what's going on, man? Welcome back to the last episode of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Wow, 50 episodes, guys. 51, counting this one. It's been a hell of a long ride. You know, this could have been finished within a month and a half, right? About a month and a half, but because of a lot of interviews, because of a lot of different topic talks I do and other things that I do throughout the days and things and moments of inspiration that come to my mind, this has been pushed back for so long. I can't even remember when I began this. It had to be probably, oh my God, this had to be maybe back in September, October, maybe a little bit later. I'm not exactly sure, but oh man, it all came, you know what? It all happened so quick. Like the developing superpowers after I finished that, it said, oh, you want more? Here it is. And there were just like four or five pages, and then it said final thought. Now, his final thought, obviously, he's pushing people to buy the cash flow 101, cash flow two, you know, 202, whatever you want to call that, 201. Um, but there was nothing else after that, and I'm like, oh, my God. Anytime I finish a book, I get so emotional. You know, so emotional saying, my goodness, I can't believe I went through this. Kind of like the positive mental attitude. When I finished the Napoleon Hill's Law of Success, that was, you know, wow. Because I've had that for five years and it's still sitting right above my head. Stephen Covey's books, anytime I finished them, I'm like, I can't believe I finished this. And because this came at such a time where I just wasn't ready for the next book and what book I had next in line... Again, you know, I could pre-order Les Brown's new book, you know, You Gotta Be Hungry, which uh, he has just come out with, and he has other books, but I'm like, nah, I don't know. I had the Dr. Joe Dispenses, um, what is it, the Supernatural, blah, 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 but again, those are just like about personal life stories. It's not so much about things that you could put into action. That's the thing. So, of course, I was looking into the subtle art of not giving a fuck, but I agree, disagree with quite a few things that he was already saying. And, um, oh, my God, I could just take out a couple of ideas to do about, what, the little mini-series on that. But nonetheless, guys, we'll figure it out. I don't know what I'm going to figure out, but it will all come. It will all make sense. So, in saying that, uh, let's dive into this. Guys, I have about uh, five rules. Five rules. Okay. I'm not going to do sum ups like I did last time because I remember with some of the books I, I said, uh, let me do a little sum up of this, a little summary of this. Nah, fuck that. Let me just dive straight into this. But again, guys, if you want another podcast, obviously the global, the global coaches podcast, we're going to be seeing how that goes. Again, I have my moments of inspiration. I want to fully utilize this. But at the same time, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. Am I going to dive into another book? We'll see. We'll see. And hopefully I do. But guys, tune into the Global Coaches because, again, that's what I have going right now. And that has just begun, and that's going to be a hell of a long one. So in saying that, let's get into rule number one. Stop doing what you're doing. In other words, you need to take a break and assess what is not working. The definition, of course, we already know of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Stop doing what's not working and find something new. Some of you are like, well, what does that mean? Well, guys, you already got your whole big sneak peek in terms of that. What's not working right now? COVID, you got laid off. It's time to find something else new. Guys, I've come across something real big in my life, and I hope that I'm not going to have to make this decision, but if I do, I'm going to have to go with my instinct. Guys, I've been working at this job for about two years, right? I mean, the salary, it's terrible, okay? But it it gives me a visa, it gives me a work permit. But what ended up happening was... There are the two women, the business partners, who just opened up their own testing center. They have given a huge – they've given me a huge deal. They're like, oh, we really need you as a teacher, but we're not a language center. And they're like, can we contact your visa agency? And I'm like, okay, here. So what if they come back and they say, Arsenio, we found a way that we could give you a a visa and a work permit. And based on what I have right now, 
I mean, there's probably going to have to, there's going to be a chance where I'd have to, like, leave the country and come back, which is impossible to do right now. I cannot afford to leave Thailand right now. So more than likely, yes, yes, I'm still going to stay at this job for the next year unless something drastic happens. Not, not for the next year, but let's just say for the next four months, okay? But at the same time, I'm going to be working with them. Because, come on, let's be honest, there's no future, obviously, with that job. One of my favorite front office staff, she's already left. And the other one, who's like a, a, a favorite above her, she's going to leave in two months. There's no future at that job. I'm not learning anything new. They're not giving me more classes. They can't, they're can't. they barely topping off my rent. This is why, obviously, I work outside and do things online. Because if I didn't, I'd be fucked beyond belief. Now, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for it all. But come on, let's let's be honest. I mean, is, is it working? Yes. But is there a future behind it? No. Am I pursuing other things? Absolutely. Can you imagine if I was all these old heads who actually work for the company? And literally waking up doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results? Expecting something different? See, teachers who are at schools right now, they're not getting paid unless you're an international school teacher. And that's the very, very few. You have to have a double master's in specific, like, subjects in order to teach that. And again, you know, I don't really see that many black international school teachers that, you know, in general. But to sum this up, we know that me being here in Thailand, I mean, it's not really working. Now, yes, I did get a nice proposition and, you know, working for these women, obviously getting paid a lot more, paying a hell of a lot less. That is fantastic in general, but... Guys, that place is pretty far outside Bangkok. I mean, let's be honest. That place is pretty far outside Bangkok. So even if I want to travel, I would have to come all the way here to Bangkok. And then I would have to travel out. And then to go all the way back home, I would have to come all the way back to Bangkok. And then somehow get on some... I mean, it's beyond insanity. So if you look at it and say, Arsenio, what is it? Well, yes, that's actually really, really good money. And there's this involved. There's that involved. I mean, there are a lot of things that could happen. But, I mean, would it take me out of my comfortability zone? Absolutely. Would I want to live out there long term? Absolutely not. Because, guys, in one year, I've already made up in my mind, there's no reason for me to be here anymore. It's not that it's not working. It's that I've already achieved glory. There's nothing going up. It's kind of like 2017 all over again, but then, of course, COVID, which was the biggest scam of the universe, as you've heard, fucking WHO said, oh, well, no, people who are asymptomatic, they don't, uh, they don't spread the virus. Holy fuck. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This is a shame. If we had known this before, we wouldn't have to shut down the world economy, would we? I mean, would we? I mean, anyways, in saying that, guys... It's so disappointing knowing and seeing what's transpiring around the world. But looking at it right now and looking at the circumstances only that I can control and only that you can, tr- you can control, what's not working? That's the biggest thing. Like, what is seriously not working with your life, your relationships, everything? You know, Robert Kiyosaki went from talking about money, which obviously he sums up greatly in here. But I know a lot of you are like, well, you know, I don't really, you know, uh, well, my my country is different in terms of buying property and this and that. So I'm not going to cover any of that. But again, this is just a way that you can reassess your life and figure out what you can do. So in saying that, there are so many different things that need to that need to fall into place and that you need to realize and look yourself in the mirror and say, all right, here we go. These are the eight categories of my life. What's working? What's not working? Because I'm going to have to figure this out right now. Am I going to continue doing this over and over? You, to be honest with you, we don't have a choice right now. Our choice right now is just to survive the, the economic storm, right? But then when you have a choice, me, Thailand, uh-uh. Me, Asia, no. Nah. I love Singapore. I really do. I love my, I love Kuala Lumpur. I really do. There are a lot of places that I love. You know, Vietnam, but I'm not going to deal with that. I'm, I'm not going to jump into that racist pool of shit out there. I'm not trying to do all that. So what is it that I am I going to do? It's time for me to go to South America and take that significant leap. It's not that it's not working, but a lot of you right now, you know it's not working. 
but you're, you don't want to take that leap. But COVID has forced you to take that leap. So what are you going to do now? Rule number two, look for new ideas. Obviously, invest in new you know, ideas. Um, you know, if you want to learn different things in specific areas, bookstores, right? And these unique subjects and books, man, they're called formulas. So you could learn about things that you know nothing about, but you know that it's essential. Like I told you guys about, obviously, learning about sales, learning about communication, marketing, and all that. That's extremely important right now. You know, there was a girl that got in contact with Mira as of late, uh, and she liked one of my posts, as a matter of fact. But I knew if I had messaged her, she would give me some bullshit ass, you know, excuse, blah, 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 blah. And so she is a coach, and she says she left her full time job to do coaching online. And she's like, How do you pick up clients? How do you do this? How do you do that? Listen, it's all about collaboration. It's all about give, give, give. See, because if your goal is, Oh, how do you get clients? I need to get clients. No. See, That is you coming from a desperation mentality. You coming from a point of conceit like what you heard on the podcast yesterday, right? If you need need money, help someone else make money. That's how it works. See, I was sitting down on my bed. I got a message from one of the girls who, of course, I, you know, they were saying, hey, are you ready? All right, we need you. Let's go. We got you to do all this, you know, all this teaching and this. And I'm like, okay, boom. I'm black on the plus side because I've heard, and I'm sorry, not heard, but I have helped other people make money. This is it. Look for new ideas. If I, uh, what was it? I was uh, listening to Pat Flynn's 45 minutes worth while I was doing a bunch of work this morning. And he was talking about, okay, Instagram. Okay, this is how Instagram works. This is how we're going to do it. You know, it's going to be really difficult. And well, he didn't say difficult, but he was saying a whole bunch of things that I had already know. But I need to learn about something that I don't already know that I can utilize and that will help. Of course, he was talking about being authentic on Instagram. I'm authentic all the way. If you guys saw the video that I posted recently uh, in terms of the Global Coaches podcast, you guys already know that I'm very authentic. I'm putting all that information out there. Damn, you went to jail. Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody. At the age of 14, yes, I went to jail based on racial discrimination. Now, if you're going to hold that against me and say, oh, I don't want to deal with you because you went to jail, uh, yeah, based on racial discrimination. Obviously, at the age of 14, crying my brains out for for, for 18 hours saying, what am I doing around these thug-ass niggas in this place? I got to get the hell out of here. I should be playing Diablo 2 online right now in air conditioning or playing video games with my best friend Mark. Why am I here? Why am I here? There you go. That's injustice. And this is why I could really give it. You, you see what I mean? So anyways, I'm going off on a tangent here, but you, you just got to you start looking for new ideas and start looking for new things and developing your mindset. And that's going to lead you to stop doing what you're doing. Right. Or you could just, of course, rule number three, find someone who's already done or doing what you do. Now, I check out different Instagram profiles. I check out uh, different Instagram profiles and I say, ooh, I like that. Oh, I see how many likes she's gotten here. I see what she's doing over here. This is really cool. That's really interesting. I post a lot of different things, a variety of great things on there. Um, And this is what I love so much about Instagram because I've cleaned up my feed and now I'm – my feed – and now I'm getting to, you know, more people are getting to click on my profile, although the algorithms have changed once again. But again – Look at someone who's doing what you're doing. Now, Digital Nomad, I could look up to Yvette Rose, but she hosts a lot of things in terms of what she's coaching and whatnot. Yes, that's ultimately what I want to do, but I need to become a transformation coach first. After that, then I could possibly put together things and start coaching and doing all these other things too, just as the guy Burke. So if he gets like 10 people, holy shit, he makes $25,000 right then and there, right? That's something that I possibly would like to do. But once I become a transformation coach, obviously I'm going to have clients and then I can host seminars and do even bigger things. You see what I mean? That's literally taking classes, reading, attending seminars, listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts such as this. That's rule number four. You can't attend seminars right now. No way. You possibly can't take classes, but you could take a lot of virtual classes. Now, me figuring out, okay, what am I going to do next? Okay, the subtle art, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. What? Uh, how am I going to continue learning? Because I can't just stop reading books. Guys, I just finished it, so am I going to stop because I just hit a roadblock? No way. I'm going to dive into another book, right? And so 
That last rule number five, make an offer. This is in terms of money, right? So if you're into real estate and everything, I doubt that anyone is, but make different offers. You're going to have to put your foot in water, in water that you are just completely oblivious. You don't know what's in that water, but that's the only way. Like you don't know how cold the water is going to be, right? So have you ever actually, you know, tiptoed your feet in and see how cold it is? You're like, oh my God, it's really cold. And then you end up not not jumping in, but then the next person over there to your left, they just end up just jumping right in. That's it right there. See, that's called a go-getter. That's called someone taking that big step forward regardless of what's on the other side. That's exactly what you have to do. Does that make sense to you guys out there? Man, I literally just bit my lip. You guys probably heard that too. Um, believable. But I think I'm good. I don't think I bit it. All right, so anyways... In saying that, people, you learned a lot. These Robert Kiyosaki podcasts, I know I do a lot of off-topic. Everything's all over the place. Nothing's really planned with this except my will of life and a couple of other things. That's why the Global Coaches podcast is going to be far better. Uh, And we're we're actually, you got your Inspirational Monday. That's me. You got the Transformation Tuesday with Mir. We're going to be bringing coaches on uh, a Q&A and a Meet Us or we're going to share our stories with you guys. So we already have a schedule that we're going to set and that we've already set throughout the week. We're going to do the face I'm sorry, the Instagram lives. We're going to be bringing a number of different people on. See what I mean? So guys, this is just all about raising the bar. That's set. Of course, that's with me, you know, and someone else just like motivational mentors, but that is set. So this is something that you guys need to understand and something that these collaborations and it depends what field of endeavor you're in right now. Because, again, I don't really communicate with folks on here. The only people who have are others who have uh, heard about me through motivational mentors. They follow me on Facebook and they're like, oh, my God, I really love your podcast. And I'm like, hey, which one do you listen to? You see what I mean? But people who listen to me directly on here, they don't really associate themselves or, you know, message me uh, on my Instagram. But some people who do follow me on Instagram, they do the same thing. So, wow. First and foremost, if at any given point you have listened to any of these 51 episodes, including this one being number 51, I just want to say thank you so much. You went through all of this. I remember being on the train on the outskirts of this town, you know, uh, figuring out, not figuring out, but, you know, writing up a bunch of uh, blogs in that 30-minute span that I had from one station to another um, on this specific book and writing things and preparing for my, you know, my podcasts. I remember all of that. I can recall that. And I'm not, and, you know, I miss those days like I do my next breath. And I'm so grateful for those days, too. And now they've come to an end. But guess what? Every time something comes to an end, there must be a new beginning. So I'm hoping within the next couple of days or possibly even tomorrow, you guys will hear that I will be, uh, you know, my next book. Now, I've already done the Dale Carnegie's. I've already done Napoleon Hill. I've already done Lisa Nichols. I've done Lewis Hose. I've done Gary Vee. Uh, I've done the money book, which is this book. Stephen Covey's books are the most amazing. And again, if I get another one of his books, it's just going to be like a reiteration of information. So I won't do that. But the show must go on. So guys, stay tuned for more. And thank you so much for this amazing ride. And Robert, uh, what is it? Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over and out.